computer science, the sexiest of the sciences with the most sexless scientists. It's an endless onslaught of programming assignments that you plagiarize the answers from Geeks for Geeks mixed with the optimistic desire for at least one guy in your class to ask you out given that there's a 9 to 1 male to female ratio. <sighs> but they never do. Out of things that break down, we have catabolic reactions, my code, many of our mental states during the Panera Bread, and the topic of computer science. We will be focusing on the big three subgroups of computer science, namely computational theory, computer architecture, and how to make robots do those things we want them to and still get funding. The first subcomponent of computer science that we'll be discussing is computational theory. And after typing this into DuckDuckGo incorrectly, creating a conspiracy theory about computational theory, affirming the adage that yes, there is porn for everything, indulging yourself and saving it to your favorites for the next couple sessions, you'll move on to looking at the auto-suggestions. And when autocorrect suggests all the things you actually wanted to look up based off your previous searches, you'll realize that you wish you had a way to hide that deeply embarrassing search history. Maybe something like a VPN. VPNs, the under the bed of the internet. We'll hide your crunchy socks in those tentacle magazines private so you don't have to. Overall, computational theory is a math-heavy topic aimed at making computers run faster. Which, if you know us computer scientists, we're great at making things run faster. A big part of computational theory is finding the computational complexity of algorithms. Computational complexity is how long it takes something to finish. It's typically based off of how large the input is, and usually you mark the end result with a big O. So essentially the script of my ideal fictional love life. Generally speaking, a high computational complexity is bad. It means that things are complicated and it'll run slowly. While a low number means computational theorists are going to nut over it. And if you're still unsure what computational complexity is, as humans, we determine the computational complexity of things every day. Namely, in things like determining how long to wait for your cinnamons to cool down. A high computational complexity means that you're going to have to wait a long time, and they'll probably become crusty bread rolls by then. Uh, while a low computational complexity means that you'll wait a short time, but you're going to end up burning the roof of your mouth on hot, white, sticky fluids. So yeah, I'm pretty much a master at computational theory already because all of my computational complexities are low, i.e. I just can't wait to end up putting things in my mouth, especially if it's going to burn me in the end. In general, if you like O's, this is the field to go into. Oh, 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 rally! Audible parts. Ow! Next is computer organization and architecture, which is a close to the chip field of study. This field can include designing the CPU or central processing unit. This unit has two main purposes. One, calculating when the most inconvenient time for it to do a Windows update is. And two, warming your lap so that you can feel some form of external heat in your genitalia. Another is designing memory allocation. A fun part of this is designing physical and virtual memory, which is essentially the combination of Roblox, Earth2, and Mark Zuckerberg. Lastly, we have playing with a breadboard. If you're not familiar with what that is, uh, it's basically a game of Connect 4 with female and male parts. So essentially a low-res POV game. So to get good at designing computer architecture, all you'll need to do is open up a terminal, type in PS like you forgot something, take a look at the PID titties, pick one, and then type the word kill with the process's ID following. There you go. You just terminally kill the process. So we've discussed computational theory and computer architecture. The final subcomponent of computer science is everything else. This includes artificial intelligence, sex robots, video games, video games about sex robots, intrusion detection systems, systems that intrude detection systems, and 3D printers. All the components that are required for robot sex. Most other things can be broken down into a front end and a back end. The front end is what users can see, like the way the website looks or how easy it is to use. The back end is what users can't see, which is engineers having panic attacks in the database management room whenever the clock rate is set to increase. 
And if you don't know, uh, if you want to do front-end or back-end coding, just know that the name typically aligns with your sexual preferences of getting things done from the front or back-end. So if you're attracted to things that look nice, pick the front-end. Uh, and if you like a fast, solid pipe, get pushed from the back-end, pick back-end. And as always, if this video gave you a little bit of a boner, just uh, click that like button and subscribe. And I'm starting something new here. If you want to ask questions and see me answer it in a video, all you got to do is go on Reddit, r slash want to get good at it, post it, and you may just see it in next week's video.